They may not yet live in a world that has achieved equality, but that has never quite stopped them. Women in leadership have been changing the narrative slowly and steadily. So, what does it take to be women leaders in health? Democratic, participatory and collegial work culture. Collaborative and cooperative approaches and sharing credit for achievements besides transformational that is changing leadership norms and providing alternative role models. Empowerment of women through knowledge. Two, creating enabling environment for women to thrive by mainstreaming policies, uh, uh, in, uh, gender into policies. Uh, and three, uh, which really requires change in perspective, recognizing that a women's issue is a human rights issue, a women's issue is a fundamental issue that needs to be addressed if a nation needs to progress. Women's leadership for me means goal-oriented. Women's leadership for me means empathetic. Women's leadership for me is defined by the scores of women who lead not only at home but at work, but who lead by example, who lead to create history. I ensure women healthcare are included within the essential healthcare services. Provision of comprehensive and high quality health service for women and girls amongst other gender and age group. Maintaining the continuation of health care provided for women and girls. Research shows that women leaders in government organizations tend to implement different policies than men. These policies are more supportive of women and children, which is fundamental to addressing not only women and children's health, but the health of the entire family. Supporting other women and men's efforts and struggles, cheering for their achievements and successes, and advocating for their opportunity to express their full potential in any context, be it in family, workplace, or society in general. Historically, the health sector has seen and benefited from many great and inspirational women leaders in all its achilles, including the positions of minister, state ministers, deputy ministers and director generals. In fact, with the introduction of permanent secretary position under the Maldives civil service, women have been filling this position at the health ministry. Leadership is a quality that comes from within and there are many women around the world with such qualities but there are barriers which obstruct them. So the government, the civil societies, women organizations, they need to come up with plans to break their barriers. I think leadership is not a gender specific, but it means that you can do what you want to do and also you have to uh, balance between your professional career part and also in the other aspect in your life. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the crucial role women have played as leaders. The world, as we once knew it, has changed. What does the COVID-19 present and the future that lies beyond mean for women in leadership positions? A key issue is the crucial role of health workers, 70% of whom are women. Health workers are in the front line of efforts against COVID-19, despite facing significant risks. WHO has called for ensuring their safety from infection and protection from discrimination, stress and burnout. Women and girls are facing increased violence while shouldering increased unpaid work burdens in homes, including healthcare, for sick family members. 
Their economic work is the most insecure and unprotected. These issues need to be addressed. Gender-sensitive government policies that protect the well-being of women are needed today. COVID has also highlighted a lot of disparity across multiple uh, criteria and of course gender being one. Uh, so I think there is now a greater need actually to, to emphasize the role of women, um, especially vulnerable women during time of uh, global pandemics. For me, women's leadership is not only restricted to the battlefront or in offices of political power. For me, women's leadership begins from home. So if you want to strengthen a female leader, empower her with education, empower her with financial tools, give her access to credit, give her access to innovative methodologies, empower her with technology, empower her so that she can carry others on her shoulders. We must review existing policies and recommend revisions or the development of new policies that facilitate greater prospects for women to achieve leadership roles in health. When you want to encourage someone in a position, you should look at their uh, ability, not to look at what the limitation because of their gender. In my view, the question may be more a play rephrase to say, what more can be done to improve, to give due recognition to the fact that women leaders are already at the forefront of fighting this pandemic. And in fact, some of the countries that have done comparatively better than other countries have women as heads of governments or ministers of health. To achieve a more gender equal region, we need many more women leading the change. Governments, civil society, development partners and women themselves have important roles to play in achieving this goal. Laws, policies and actions are needed to reduce the barriers, change the norms and empower women to take their due seats at the table. WHO stands ready to play its part. This year, on International Women's Day, let's act together to foster women in leadership and achieve an equal future in a COVID-19 world.